Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. And we're two Tenderfoot tourists. Welcome to episode 93, the one about Galveston. Oh, Galveston. <laughs> Thinking of Justin. Galveston, oh, Galveston. He's what? so much better. He is so much better. Stick around for the end of the episode because we have a few things that people have wrote to us to, for some correction and uh, a little praise. I, I like that praise part. Correction, correction, correction. We wanted to tell you the right information, so right. correction is a good thing. Misleading is bad. So anyway. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> Where should we start? We already discussed our cruise. We did a right. review for that. In our um, port, is that what you'd say? Yep. our port. Uh, that we left out of is in Galveston. Yep. So we decided to make a weekend of it, just a couple of days there in Galveston before we headed out on our trip. I'm really intrigued at the idea of going on a second cruise, larger ship, a longer trip. Yeah, more, more I'm, ports. Yeah, I'm really, really interested in finding out what we think of that. I know, right? So it would be pretty incredible. Okay, so where do you want to start on this? Uh, well, let's just start where when we first came into town. First of all, I was dying to see ocean. You know how mm-hmm. I am about my beach. So um, we made a beeline that we literally drove straight to it. So I was so excited. So that was one of the first things I really paid attention to. I really loved the waves coming in. It was so cool. There were some pretty high waves coming in. There really were. And people were out there playing in it and stuff. And it was neat to um, see everybody out there on the beach. It gave me that soft, cozy feeling. Yeah. But um, it was so different, though. Because there was also all this industrial stuff in the area. Yeah, well, I was going to say, just to let everybody know, when we came in, you, you have one side of the island of Galveston, and you have another side, which is the bay side. And what she's talking about now is the um, the, the, the ocean side of the beach, but then we had to drive back to the other side of the bay side to see the industrial. Right. But it really, I mean, it's a very different environment. Um, First of all, Galveston Island is, what did you say, 27 miles long, three miles wide? <laughs> uh, let me see. It is, it's less than three miles wide at maximum width, and then its length is 27 miles long. So nailed it. <laughs> nailed it, yeah. So but that's not very big. That's not very big at all. Galveston was established in 1839, I believe. So it's been around for a while. Well, and it used to be a really big deal. Yeah, as well, far as as far as a port industry. city, yeah, industry yeah. and everything. It was. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It is crazy. It, it was. It was in the top most wealthiest cities in the U.S. back in in, the, in its heyday. When it was first around, in fact, before the 1900s, that's when it was really. Well, because like 1900, isn't that when the hurricane came through? Yeah, the hurricane in 1900. Like yeah. Blew their world apart. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we may hit upon that just a little bit there right. in this podcast. And what you're going to hear is us review uh, the hotel in which we stayed, which was the Tremont House. Um, and we're also going to review the Pier 21 and all the things that are available to you, plus a tall ship called Alyssa. Yes. Yes, thank you. A tall ship called Alyssa. Yes. What else are we going to review? Um, uh, restaurants. Right. And we're going to talk about um, the beach area a little bit. Hmm. And we're going to talk about cost of things here and there also. And, of course, did you already mention our hotel? Yes. I started to say, because I really liked our hotel. I it was too. really nice. It was very, very nice. Yeah. It was, it's a little more plush than we're used to staying at. Yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. So, um, okay, so first impressions, we go into Galveston, you're going like, wow, um, great waves, uh, lot, it's a very popular beach, you can tell. Yes, the, there was lots of traffic down there, and I don't mean traffic driving up and down the roads, but there was a lot of people down on the beach that we could see, but it wasn't like elbow to elbow, it wasn't no, like that. No, it was but not. But you could tell it was a popular area, and there was parking all down through there. If you got there soon enough. We decided to go. We were hungry because we'd been mm. driving for like four hours that time because we stopped overnight on yes, the way thankfully. into Galveston. And uh, so. It was lunchtime, baby. It was. We and were hungry. And I was getting some fresh seafood if it killed somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And so I did some research and I noticed that there's this place called The Spot. And then The Spot. The Spot. The Spot the is. The Spot. <laughs> Is a building of like I think five different venues that you can like go in and pick a venue, overlook the over over the ocean, over over the ocean, <laughs> over over, over over, over Roger, the ocean. Roger. <laughs> and you have this place called the Rum Shack, which shares a restaurant with something called the Tiki. 
Tiki uh, Hut. Tiki Hut, thank you. Uh, you got something called the Side Yard, the Squeeze, and a bakery called the Spot Bakery. And, right. And you have all these little areas. Just They're all some in Some of them are downstairs. Some of them are upstairs. Correct. Uh, and they're all connected. Like It's almost like a huge building, but it's split up. Yeah. Well, they and have, it's in the open, a lot of it. It is. And uh, par- parking is a little limited. At the time that we showed up, the parking was free. But we were here, overheard somebody that eventually it's not going to be free anymore because they are doing repairs to the parking garage that sits behind behind the spot at the time. Right. But so if you decide to go there, just uh, be planning ahead to be able to, I mean. You to, may be paying for your you parking. You may be, which is pretty customary along the beach. I to, start to say that's something we want to address is the fact that the parking down against the beach, actually you do pay. There's meters. If that fills up, which it does very quickly, we got to see that just from yeah. the time we sat down yeah. to eat to the time we were done. Going was, back to what you said earlier, setting that one up, I totally missed it. I got stuck on the spot. Yeah. Uh But, yeah, you mentioned that it fills up pretty quick. Well, and once it does fill up, there are parking lots that are just empty gravel parking lots, and they charge you, I think it was 10 bucks a a person, or I mean a car. A car, yeah, I saw that. So we saw that. Just be prepared that if you're going down there that you need to have some way to pay for it. I think the meters even have debit ability. It's Uh, crazy. It's kind of weird because you have this sign. Is sitting up there, and you have this app you can download or you can go online. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. And then you put in your money, you pay for it, you, you put your license plate number in there, and it automatically puts into a library of cars that have paid to park there. And so the meter, uh, what is it, monitor or whatever you have, the guy that like checks the cars to see if they're being parking there legally. I know they used to call them meter maids. I don't know if they still call them that or not. Who knows what's politically correct anymore. But anyway, they go and they, and they go by and they check the license plates and see if whether or not you are on the list. You are on the list. Right. So, um, from what I've been told, which we didn't check out the price of what it costs there, someone told me it's pretty reasonable seeing how not only do you have that, but uh, you have access to the beach and Pleasure Pier if you park in the right place. Speaking of Pleasure Pier, um, we were actually at our table. We sat at, at the spot. We could totally see Pleasure Pier. Yeah. And yeah. it was kind of cool looking. You can go to our Facebook page and find those too. That's true, 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 true. So what is Pleasure Pier, honey? It is like an amusement park. Out on the pier. It is. It is huge. Uh, it's got midway games. It's got roller coasters. It's got a Ferris wheel. Uh, what is that called? That big swing thing that's a tower and you go spinning around at top. I don't, I don't know. know. I just call it the swings, but it's really scary because <laughs> it goes up way higher than I want to be swinging around. Well, they have something there called the Iron Shark that, like, the roller coaster goes out over the ocean outside over the, the pier. Over the edge of the pier, yeah. Yeah, and then comes back in again. We didn't go because we had um, other things we wanted to do that day. Well, and we were also trying to keep our costs down. Well, yeah, I was going to say because it costs to go into Pleasure Pier. And it looked pretty cool and everything, but you and I aren't huge on amusement park rides anyway, so we decided it wasn't worth it for us. I mean, Kyle and Alyssa or Ale- Kyle, Alyssa, Haley, Olivia, all them, they might think it's worth it because they're really into rides. Mm-hmm. But – Anyway, for for us old fogies, it wasn't, but it was really cool to see it. It really looked like a fun time. View tickets. Uh, I okay. I apologize about the an all day ride pass is twenty nine dollars for people who are forty eight of inches or taller. Anyone who's under uh, forty eight inches is twenty dollars per person. That's an all day ride pass, right? That gives you access to all of the um, the rides there. A family all day ride pack is $89 for two passes for people who are 48 inches or taller. um, uh, (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so there is a peer pass walk-on. Oh, where you don't ride things, you just you walk just, on? Okay, you'll need a peer pass in order to gain admittance, 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 admittance. Admittance. Thank you. To the peer, pleasure peer. Uh, I'm reading this from the website. The peer pass uh, only allows you to enjoy the peer, but not experience the rides. If you are... I could have walked out on a pier in Galveston, Steve. Yeah, just suck it up. If you're on a pier wow. and decide to join on the fun, you upgrade an all-day pass by paying the difference by sixteen ninety nine. Or for anyone who's 48 inches of or So basically, taller. if we wanted to walk on the pier, we would have had to pay $10 a piece. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think I would have done it, but that's me. It's $10 a person just to walk out. However, you took me to a, a restaurant that was pretty good. The food was good. We enjoyed it. The downside to it is from what we saw, at least two of the restaurants there, you're kind of serving yourself. You go up and you order 
Oh, you're talking about the spot now. Yes. Yes. And they call you back and you pick up your food and you take it back to your table. So, I mean, keep that in mind if you go there. Right. If you're the type that likes to sit down service, then that's not the place for you. No. But the food was good. Their calamari was really good. Yeah, they had this actually shrimp I'd like to mention is that shrimp that was I wrapped in what bacon. They called it. And cream cheese. And cream cheese on the inside. No, it was pepper jack cheese on the oh. inside and it was wrapped with bacon. It was breaded and deep fried. Yeah, it was amazing. And I think that's a thing in Galveston because we had it at um what's it called? Fisherman's Wharf. Fisherman's yeah, Wharf also. We did. They had the same thing. They did. So it must be a Galveston thing. I'm gonna look it up and try to make my own. If I make my own and they're good, I We'll post pictures. Please do, Betty Lou. So anyway, here we are. Um, Want to just finish off like how many places we ate. I mean, we ate at like several different places. Like the Fisherman's Wharf, we ate lunch there. Their food was good too. And the, the cool thing is, is they are right there on Pier 21. And that is the area that faces the intercoastal. And that you'll see from there, from across the, the bay, there's a lot of um, oil rigs yes, and uh, the Indu- boats, containers. Yeah, just different industrial type ships yes. that come through there. Also, right next to you is the Elissa. Yes. So you're literally sitting where if you just dove in the water and swam a few yards, you're right there at the side of that ship. It's and, really cool. But the thing is also that uh, our listeners need to know is it's not just – the the only boats you see out there is the Alyssa and also the uh, the the industrial style uh, shipping and, and, yep. and rigs and stuff. But you have personal boats out there too. They actually come up to the Fisherman's Wharf, the restaurant, from behind, and they can actually get themselves. What well, was parked to eat. right behind my seat? I mean, I was right there at yeah. the edge of the dock right. with a fencing type of thing behind me, so I couldn't fall in the water. That's a plus. But there was a whole bunch of sea doos yeah. parked across there. People yeah. just pull up, tie her up. Yeah, Get, go and in. come up and find a seat and eat. Yeah, yeah, we were we were eating out on the water essentially. I on thought a dock. that was really cool. Yeah, it was really kind of cool. At the Tremont, just we're going to touch upon this, okay? So the Tremont, it's a really nice place to to uh, to visit, to go to, and stay at. But they do not have a uh, uh, continental breakfast for you. They don't. You have to pay for your food and everything like you. Right. You don't have those perks. You don't have those. So we wanted to find a good place to eat breakfast in the morning. If we're going to pay for food, I'm not going to pay. And Okay, so you're at you're a nice... You're not going to pay 12 bucks for a croissant sandwich. I'm not going to pay $12 for a croissant sandwich. I, I really like the hotel, but, I mean, they really geared it to people who have a little mucho dinero in order yeah. to spend dough. We don't have no dinero. No dinero. And so, um, well, just to let everybody know, the only reason why we were able to stay there is because of the fact of my points. Yeah, your travel points. Yeah. So we, I did some research and I asked some people around the, the that desk is and everything. He asked the locals. And there, just right around, literally right around the corner from the hotel is a place called Shrimp and Stuff. Right. And we were able to walk to it. And it was... It was in a big building, but it was just a small part of it in the, on the bottom level. Mm-hmm. And as we're walking up, there's this man, and he's talking to another couple. And he's just very – it's not that he's boisterous. That makes it sound like he was loud. But he was very friendly, genuine, mm-hmm. bubbly type of person. And I would have guessed probably 60. And he he starts inviting us all, come on in, come on in, you know. And he opens the door and holds the door open for all of us. And then another couple came at the same time mm-hmm. behind us. And he went to each woman as we walked in and he pulled the chair out and seated us, made sure they pulled the chair out for us. And then he walked around, gave everybody menus, joked around a little bit. It <laughs> had a very uh, interesting act accent yeah, at so the same I, time. I'm usually pretty good at pinpointing accents and I love a good accent. And I could not figure out what his accent was for the longest time. Finally, we just asked. Right. And what was his name again? Nesser? Nesser. Or Nessar or something. Nesser. Like. Nesser, okay. And he was, oh my gosh, it just went out of my brain. He's Lebanese. Thank you. And he he's Lebanese. And he was such a nice man. And to top things off, I was way off on his age. <laughs> yeah. He's in his 70s. Yeah. And he didn't own the place, but he chose to work there to keep busy. And he took pride in it. Steve tried to ask him what the good food was. And he said, everything, yeah. don't make me do that. Yeah. And <laughs> he wasn't wrong. 
No, he was not Our wrong. Our food was very good. There's only like two hotels that are sitting right there in the downtown area. Neither one of these hotels actually serve a breakfast, and you're really wanting something that is really nice and it's well-priced. Shrimp and Stuff is definitely a place for you to go to. Well, and the prices were very reasonable for what you were getting, and I know with mine, I had more than I could eat. Oh, man. I know. So <laughs> I, I, I had something I'd never had before. It was smoked salmon. With a bagel and cream cheese. And capers. And capers, mm -hmm. yeah. Which I always said, what are these little peas called? What <laughs> you are calling them peas. And what are these like, peas those called? Are, those peas. What are these peas? And they all see little peas here. But, uh, and you had a. It was called the shrimp scramble. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> and I had not had a mimosa yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's I right. did you have did one there though, and it was a pineapple mimosa. Is that right? Yeah. It was yeah. really good. Super clean, super friendly, very good food, excellent service. We can't say enough about shrimp and stuff downtown. Do you remember what he did to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I came in, I was wearing a hat because I'm bold and I, well, I'll get sunburned. And, uh, he came around my chair. He's just very friendly. Would you say boisterous? See, I, I say that, but I, I hate to say was, boisterous because that makes it sound like he's super loud, but he's but like a bubbly he's personality. Just, yeah, he's very bubbly. And he comes and smacks me in the back of the head. And I thought, well, he wants me to rub my hat. And it wasn't a hard hit. It was just a tap. No, no. He, he just gave me a smack like that. And I took it off and he turned around. And he goes, I knew it. You're bald. Like and that. he grabbed you by the head and kissed you on the head. <laughs> I was like, I didn't expect that. It, it was me so up. funny. It was so funny. So, yeah. Um, yeah, to make a long story short, re really, out of all the places we, eat, we ate there, that was our favorite just because, not just because of the food, because of the person who was serving us. Right. And he was right to the end. He was the greatest. Um, when we got ready to leave, he opened the door for us again, told us to have a wonderful day mm -hmm. and that he was really glad we had come. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a great experience. So if you're interested in going down there, uh, even if you're not like staying downtown, but if you're just looking for a good place to eat, they're at 216 23rd Street, Galveston, Texas, 77550. They also do catering. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Um, we, we stopped in somewhere to try a little bit of a sweet treat. We weren't starving, but we needed to have oh, a little yeah. something, something. So, so, yeah, everybody everybody tells me that we need to go to uh, La King's Confectionery. Oh, and it was so fun. I mean, it was really crowded. Yeah, it was right on the other street behind the Tremont House. Everything pretty much outside of the spot that we are talking about is all walking distance. We we turned our car in the first day that we arrived there at the Tremont House Hotel, gave it to the valet, which, by the way, that's good to know is they have a valet. Right. It costs you $18 per day. thing is, if you're using the valet there, you can use it over at the sister hotel also. Oh, yeah. Um, it starts with a G. The Galvez. Galvez. Um, but you can use it there also, and it's considered, um, what is it, the most sister haunted. hotel. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's one that considered. In fact, uh, there was something. Don't let me forget to tell them about the tours that they have over there at the Galvez. Yes. Yes. So um, where are we? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we tried the Le King's Confectionery. The, mm -hmm. the place is old. They have the old-style uh, marble countertop. They do their own taffy, and they, they do soda jerk sort of. Uh, make, making of malts and milkshakes and right. stuff there. Um, was it busy? It was so packed you could barely move. They told us it got busy down yeah, there. Yeah, I had no idea it was going to be that busy. It was still fun to go in there. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. And we ended up buying some fudge. The thing is, not everything that they sell do they make there. That is true. So if you want something that they had made, handmade, then you need to ask which one it is and let right. them tell you. Because some of it, they just buy and then they sell on, the, on with their stuff, which, I mean, there's a ton of stuff they're offered. They even have ice creams and stuff right. like that. But essentially what you're looking at, it's in it's in a very old building, right? Um, it's an old school candy making uh, area with like it's got a 1920 soda fountain and, and all that stuff. It's really, really kind of cool. I even like the entryway. It was really neat because the big tall really doors and you open the doors and then you have to walk up these stairs yeah. to the main floor of it. And I mean, it's not a lot of stairs, but a lot of their buildings down through there were made that way. Oh, yeah. Where you had to go upstairs before you could be inside on the first level. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was – It. I, I really, really, really enjoyed 
looking at the buildings around there. I started to say the architecture was really neat. It was some really nice architecture. Um, And I think that, make a long story short, that I would go down there just with a camera just to take photos of the buildings down there. Yes. 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 Without a doubt. I mean, if you're someone who's looking for something that to take pictures of and you got that contrast between industrial and like old Victorian style buildings, boom. Or even some uh, art deco, new art deco. Uh, let me see. What other kind of architecture? I mean, you're just all kinds of nice architecture down there. So, um, so let me see. Did we eat anywhere else? We ate at four different places while we were down there. Uh, we oh, we ate, ate inside of the Tremont Hotel the Tremont. or Tremont House. Um, we got Caesar salads. And they were good. I mean, I'm not going to say whoa, outstanding, but they were good. Mm-hmm. And we were looking for something a little lighter, and that was exactly what we needed that night. It was right there in the hotel, so it was kind of nice to not have to go anywhere. It really, really was. Um, they have a full menu there for you to eat. They have uh, like a cafe sort of thing. They can, you can have coffees. Uh, you can have like alcohol. They'll make some drinks. They even have a bar, which, by the way, I wish I'd wrote down all the information about that particular bar that okay, was in the hotel. Our bartender was so good. Very knowledgeable. So anyway, yeah, um, great bartenders down there. They, uh, if they don't have it on the menu and you have recipe and if they can make it, they'll make it for you. Make a long story short, the Tremont House, it's got so much history. It's got so much to offer people who are coming in, from, you know, looking for a place to stay, see some historical sites, uh, really engage with a, a really interesting culture, if you ask me, because, I mean, it's got a lot of rich history down there in the downtown Galveston area. Well, and you walk into this hotel, and it's just incredible because, I mean, it's not so fancy schmancy that I felt like, oh, we need to go back outside. But it was really nice. I mean, yeah. you walk in and you have to walk up the steps, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was really cool. But I um, just to add in here real quick while I'm thinking about it, they do have a lift over mm. to the left side when you first walk in for anyone who um, use a wheelchair. Yeah, they have So that that's available. really cool. Um, but we had to go in and we go up to the counter, an area just gorgeous. Over to your left is this beautiful what would you call it? (laughs) Lobby, Lobby. this beautiful lobby area and the bar. And then, I mean, all these people are sitting all over the place and it's gorgeous. It was really good. They have trees on the inside. Yeah. Um, They have an area where people, lots of room for people to sit down, relax. Uh, They even have like complimentary cheese and crackers and stuff like that for people to eat on. They even had a jazz band at one point. They were very good. They were very good. And uh, you could sit at the cafe, listen to them, or just sit out in the lobby area. Did we ever post that video of that little bitty girl dancing? I didn't get it. Oh. I thought I was recording. Oh, yeah, you took pictures instead. I was so mad. At myself. There was how old do you think two, yeah, maybe two years old, and her mommy and daddy were they were dancing, dancing. close, slow dancing, and she's over there just dancing away, having a good time right next to him. It was the cutest thing ever, and I missed it. He missed it. He mucked that it up. That <laughs> would have been just so awesome to have. Anyway, so uh, Tremont House, like you you can figure out about now, has a lot to offer anyone who decides to stay there. They have a cafe. They have a coffee shop. They have jazz. The rooms were lovely. Live jazz. I, I really liked the room. The rooms, they have these 12-foot tall uh, uh, ceilings that were – I mean, I, our room was actually technically pretty small, but – it really felt large because yeah, the it's ceiling so tall. was mm-hmm. so nice. The window was really tall. It was yeah. beautiful. Um, our window faced the Mardi Gras uh, sign, not, not sign, but the uh, arch. I started to say you can't call it a banner either because no, it's the I know. Lit, uh, lit arch. It's yeah, it's, it's lit at night. It's an arch. It's it's sad. it's if you go on uh, if you go on the internet and you just say Galveston. Island, Texas, that is going to be one of the things that pops up is that Mardi Gras arch that archway. goes up, mm-hmm. the archway. Mardi Gras was actually very instrumental in actually revitalizing the downtown. In fact, I think I read somewhere that 300,000 people actually show up just for Mardi Gras alone that lasts for two weeks. <laughs> If you go down there, there are elements that are more adult oriented. It's not just all family. Uh, during the daytime, it's very family oriented, but at the evening, you can tell people are out there are having a good time. Right. And we actually did ask the guys that, um, did the Valet. valeting 
if there was anywhere we shouldn't go once it became dark. And they told us the the boundaries, what they would do and what they advise. Yeah. And, I mean, the area we went was perfectly fine. Yeah, we didn't feel like we were in jeopardy or at all. No, it was hopping. (laughs) It was hopping. It really was. There was a lot of music and um, people walking around talking and laughing. Yeah. But it, it felt safe. I didn't feel worried about it at all. Now, if you really want a really good view while you're staying at the Tremont House, they do have a bar available to people up on the roof Monday through Saturday, 4 p.m. to 12 a.m., and then Sunday 2 to 10. But it, it really is a nice view. You can see Pleasure Pier from our hotel. Uh, it's on the other side of the island. You can see all the rides Less and the than roller coasters. miles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's not, it's not very far away. So the... Uh, they actually offer to- historical tours for the Strand. So if you really want to do that, that's available to you. Um, uh, speaking of tours, the Hotel Gavez, which yes. is a sister hotel for the Tremont House, is considered one of the most haunted houses in Texas or the U.S.? I, don't I was thinking it was in the U.S., but the US. I could be wrong. And and they offer n- not only historical tours of that particular building, which is extremely old, which don't ask me what – how old that building is specifically. But they offer ghost tours. It was before the 1900 flood that that place existed, though. I know that. It's the 1800s that that place was built. So it's the original building and they've rebuilt it? Well, now that's cool. I no, wish we could have went there. <laughs> it is one of the few structures that actually survived the, the hurricane. So they and were so, able to just clean it up and... Yep. And so the ghost tours are every Wednesday and Thursday and Friday at 2 p.m. The That last about 30 to 45 minutes and it's... Fifteen dollars per person, I believe. They also have a historical tour, which is runs uh, the same days, and but it's at uh, ten a.m. to two p.m. Oh, they run them at ten and two, and uh, it's open to the public, and it's to ten dollars for the historical fee. Was uh, that where the, you had originally one just to stay? Uh, at one time, I thought if I couldn't get at the Tremont, which I wanted to be as close to the. Um, the pier as possible because that meant we could walk and it'd be a lot easier. If we stayed at the Hotel Gavez, um, we we would have to get in the car and drive over to it. Gotcha. I didn't want to walk three miles. <laughs> sorry. No. Um, also, uh, if you're at the Tremont House, I'm sorry, honey. Did you, did you have something you were going to say? Uh-uh. The Tremont House, the, seeing how it's a sister hotel, you can actually have a shuttle that'll take you over to it. You already said this, didn't no, you? No, actually, I talked about the fact that your um, valet ticket is um, transferable. You can use it there also without mm-hmm. paying extra. But I did not mention the shuttle. I'd forgotten about the shuttle. So yeah, good job, Steve. <laughs> it's free because you already paid the valet uh, and you're staying at the hotel, that is. You're staying at the hotel. It, it all comes with your room. So you can go and take a tour of the Galvez. Which, from what everybody has told me, the place is just really, really nice, really super fancy, and it is worth the ten dollars just for a history tour. Right. Um, so, as far as uh, history goes, and touring, and, and things to see. Speaking of the Galvez and touring that, there's other things that people have access to that is uh, really good museums. So we also mm-hmm. we also went on the tall ship, Alyssa. Oh. The Alyssa, yeah. And I think that may be my, other than the fairy, possibly, boy, it, oh, I liked them both so much. But I really think that was one of my favorite things that we did in Galveston. Yeah. Because I've always wanted to walk around on one of those. The Alyssa is, um, uh, we were immediately in love with this thing. And we, we I, I've seen photos of this thing. And supposedly, it's still seaworthy. And you can still take, they still take it out like once or twice a year. They actually train people to actually be aboard it, and actually you could be a hand on the clipper ship. If you do, we have a clipper ship anyway. I don't know that it's a it's a tall ship. A tall ship. So you can actually uh, you can actually be a hand on ship. And we were talking to someone who just who uh, who does the training. You have to go through at quite literally a Coast Guard exam in order to do this, and it's free to do. The only thing that you have to pay for is your book. And your T-shirt when you're done. Isn't that right? Those are the two well, things? Well, T-shirt or – it's more than one T-shirt, I'm pretty sure, but – Yeah. Because you have to wear certain things while you're – Oh, is that right? I can't That's what that. I understood. Okay. But I could be very wrong. No, not well, you. Well, and they told us that um, this last time they had 140-some people – Start the program oh, and yeah. only only forty some finish. Yeah, so it's, it's it's not easy. But once you're 
done, you're certified. Right. And then you get put on a list to come down and, and sail with. Right. And it's usually day, just little day trips, but, um, Mm -hmm. how cool is that? That is really, really cool. So you actually have to learn the lingo that goes with that ship because there's a certain style of certain words that they use that you wouldn't normally use. It's entirely different. Do you think they say cast off, you mateys? I hope so. Go, (laughs) arr. So, um, anyway, so this, it's, it's kind of a rum, 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 rum. (laughs) So you can go in, you, I think you pay like nine to $10 in order to have a, a a guided tour, an audio tour, if you want. And you, it takes, it takes a little while to get through it. There's like uh 30 some odd stations that you like 25 or 30 stations. You have to listen to like a two or three minute audio. Okay. But you're going to get through it as fast as you want to get through it. Because if you don't want to listen to the details of it, if you just want to know what it's called, you're going to hit the number. You're going to listen to a part. That is true. Then you're going to move on. That is true. But we liked it. We're his, we're into history. We enjoyed it. Um, it too had quite a few modern features on it, but that's because they really did. They still use it. Right. <laughs> uh, we also learned about the captain's coffin. Yeah, that thing's cool looking. Is so where the the well, you got the helm for mm-hmm. the wheel and everything. You got this big box. It's that, that it's hooked into with the gears that covers all the gears. Right. And they it's call called it, the captain's coffin. Called the captain's coffin. It's you can open it up and look inside. It's really kind of cool. And the wood on this ship is just actually. Absolutely beautiful. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty. I did. I loved it. I think some of my best pictures besides on our cruise was that ship. Well, you know, do you remember what they, we had to go into the museum and watch the video about the Alyssa and we actually discovered that it was smuggling cigarettes out of Cuba. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. That ship was doing that too. Um, it, it was, it did a lot of stuff and then it ended up in Greece, I think it was in disrepair and it was just, and someone recognized what it was when they looked at the mast that was on the inside and right. had the plaque on there and the inside that d- gave a designated number. And they saved its life. Yeah. Uh, the thing is measuring 205 feet in length and it's about the nine, 90, 99 feet, nine inches of the main mast. Uh, she carries 19 sails that cover more than a quarter of an acre of surface. So you know once that wind that those sails catch wind it's it's taken Oof. off. Yep. Um Alyssa is uh open daily tours uh the Texas Seaport Museum. That's where you go to see it located at Pier 21. Um they they have a lot to offer down there at P20 P21. <laughs> Uh, they have the Ocean Star uh, Museum, which gives you a look inside the uh, the industrial side of the uh, oil rigging, oil rigs out there. And they show you how that's done. Uh, they got the Pier 21 Theater, which shows you the the, the great storm of 1900. They show you a little documentary about the the hurricane. Don't they have a train museum down there too? They do have a train museum. Um, in fact, you took a really good picture of it. And we yeah, both we'll put that back up. What did we say the thing looked like? It makes me think of Ghostbusters. Yeah, <laughs> it's because it was at night and all glowy and it does. cool looking. <laughs> so uh, the Alyssa is something that really is amazing to see. It's highly rec- we highly recommend it there. I would go back. I would totally go back. Um, they have a lot of other recipe, uh, recipes, restaurants down there that we did not mention in this podcast. We did mention the Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, very good food. As we always say, just good do location. your research if you go because it, it's going to be about your personal interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and just check the reviews. Yeah, definitely check the reviews. And uh, you know what? Um, I think we covered everything, didn't we? I, I mean, I hope so. Galveston is is uh, you and I both agree that it's more like a a weekend getaway, wouldn't you agree? I think so. I mean, we didn't see everything we wanted to see. No. So maybe it could be for a few more days than that. But for us, I think it's more of a weekend getaway. Right. I think it's a great place to hang out until it's time for you to catch a cruise ship. I do too. I, I, I do too. I think that's a good way to put it. Um, I'm I'm. Thinking about the fact that I'm not sure there's a ton of things for kids there. I think they would have liked the Alyssa if they're of a certain age. True. And, um, of course, the beach is always interesting and the um, the pleasure pier. pleasure pier. But otherwise, I, a lot of it's geared more towards adults, and that's mm-hmm. that's okay, too. 
Right. Well, they do have a water park down there. Remember? I That's true. That? I forgot about the water park. So yeah. mix that. I don't know what I'm talking about. No. But <laughs> anyway. That's not true. It was just one more step in our fun vacation. It really was. And you know what? I'm so glad we got to go. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I think the, the whole the whole time that we we were down there, Moody Garland, Garlands, Moody Gardens <laughs> and Slitterbon Water Park in Galveston. Slitterbon. Slitterbon. Oh, the water park down there. Are places that people enjoy going to, so I had to figure we need to at least tell people that that exists. Yeah, I'd forgotten, so that tells you. So, I mean, uh, with that, in, if you are a person who wants to go down there, that would entertain you for a week, I almost bet. That could be. So, um, but as far as like the historical side, I think a weekend would be great. With that being said, I would have to say that what this is another great episode, another great episode. <laughs> Um, you can't get much better than this. No, I, I really enjoy it. I You know, our best episodes are always the ones we experience. I fully believe that. Mm-hmm. And I think this is no exception. So thank you so much for listening to episode. Thank you so much for listening to episode. What? What number is it? Number this? 93. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The yeah. one about Galveston. Oh, Galveston. <laughs> Every time you say that, I think of Justin. Galveston, oh Galveston. So now we're at the end of the podcast. We're going to share some some corrections and some praise. I'd say we should do the corrections first. Mm-hmm. Wendy and Justin, they went with us on our trip. Oh, yeah. On our cruise. And one of the things we talked about was the food situation. In the main dining and, hall. And the fact that we didn't see very many families in there with children. But we did see them in the wind jammer, which is the buffet. And we assumed it was because the menu wasn't geared towards kids. That's the short version. Well, she writes, FYI, the main dining room does have a kid's menu with lots of kid-friendly options. Parents can look at it and order the night before so the wait time is reduced. After the kids have finished their entree, one of the Adventure Ocean Kids Program members will whisk away the little ones so parents can enjoy coffee and dessert alone. And it's really a fabulous setup. That was some good advice, Wendy. Yeah, I had no idea. But we wouldn't have had any idea because they would have had no reason to hand us the kids menu because none of us had any little children with us. None of us had none of us had that. Very much appreciate that update because that's good to know. And then we were written to by Cindy. She's always fun to hear from. Mm -hmm. And she says, I loved your insights so much. This is why this is my favorite travel podcast out there. It's like reading the five-star reviews on Amazon and then clicking the one-star review and then having to make your own determination in the middle. You guys do that because you're regular people like the rest of us. I'll reserve my final opinion if cruising would be for me after you wrap up all these details. Loving your show and your pictures. Thank there you, you Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. That's awesome. I, I love those. Kind of, we love those kind of responses when people are actually like telling us, okay, what what are we doing right? Right? Yeah. And, and like we said, we want to be told when there's something wrong also, but it's just good to hear from you people. <laughs> oh, it's so good to hear. And, and you can also have a voice on our podcast as well. If you hear something that in this episode or a previous episode that we had, uh, had turned out, it, it doesn't sound right to you. It doesn't, or there's some missing information that you think that you could share with other people on the podcast. We'll present it on the podcast. And also, if you'd like to give us some sort of constructive criticism of how we're doing, uh, you know what? We're open for that too. Uh, just simply email us at tenderfoottourists at gmail.com. Two Tenderfoot Tourists is a weekly family friendly podcast. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify, just to name a few. To get in touch with us and chat about this podcast or even your travel experiences, simply email us at tenderfoottourists at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, keep those suggestions coming, and maybe you'll give us our best episode of 2019. I'm Steve. And I'm Sandy. Until next time, stay tender. 